Because you're going to look at old videos, say, of Jack Nicholas or Johnny Miller, and you're going to see they lifted that lead foot. And you're going to say, Mark, when they lift that lead foot, they're getting behind the golf ball. But I want you, even Bubba Watson now, and I'm sure we could find some other players. I think Matt Wolf gets that foot up into, into the air as well. So we could find players that do that, but are they staying centered? Are they shifting behind it? What's happening when they do that? Hey everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create a centered pivot in golf. I'm going to give you two fantastic drills that are going to have you creating a centered pivot when you swing the golf club. And we're going to discuss a very important power move that's really misunderstood that's going to have you hitting it further than ever. But before we get to that, I've really enjoyed bringing this free content to you and our YouTube community, it's growing. And I want it to continue to grow and you can help me with that. And the way you can help me is by sharing this content with your friends, liking this video when it's over, subscribing to my YouTube channel, and the easiest way to do that is click on that little red button in the corner of this video, and that just alerts you when I have new videos available for you to watch, and then comment. Okay, so as always, the first thing we need to do is we need to define a centered pivot and help those of you at home to understand what is a centered pivot in golf? And a centered pivot, very simply, is as I swing the golf club, my head, my nose, my sternum stays right over the golf ball. So you can see I'm not swaying off the golf ball. I'm not moving off the golf ball in my backswing. I'm staying very centered. And I feel like in the 90s, 2000, early 2000s, a lot of golf instruction was based around you've got to keep this a little bend in this, this trail leg, which for me would be my left leg, but we got to keep a little bend in that trail leg. And as we do that, we need to move behind the golf ball so we can unload and, and drive that golf ball as, as far as we possibly can. And so get into the 2000s, mid 2000s, late 2000s, and all of a sudden science gets injected into golf and we're able to start measuring what happens in a golf swing. And what we started to understand is to control the bottom of our golf swing, to get the bottom of my golf swing to happen in the same spot every time. And I always say that a very big picture of golf is learning to control the bottom of your golf swing. But the easiest way to do that was by staying more centered over the golf ball, not creating the shift off the golf ball. So if you remember during that time, if you'd go to a PGA Tour range, you'd see a lot of caddies holding the club head on the, on the back side of their player's head as they're swinging golf balls to keep that head more centered. Now, there's always outliers. There's always exception exceptions to this. Carl Pedersen um, is still a player who, who creates a lot of move off, off the golf ball and we see others. But for the day in and day out player, for the average player, in my experience and then through science, I find that staying centered, staying over the golf ball makes it much easier for them to hit the ground where they're supposed to and to get the divot in front of the golf ball. Okay, so let's get into some ways that we can create this centered pivot. And before we get too deep into it, I do want to talk about, I, I, in the first segment I said about getting a divot uh, in front of the ball, hitting the ground under the golf ball. So we're talking a little bit more off the ground. When the ball's on a tee with a driver, I can do, I still like to see my students stay pretty centered, but it leaves me a little bit of freedom there. And also I'm hitting up on the golf ball. So there's a little more freedom with the driver, but definitely when we're striking a golf ball off the ground or very low on a tee, whether it's an iron, a hybrid, a fairway wood, a wedge, we're going to want to produce more of this centered pivot. So the first thing that I want to go over and I want to discuss, I always start with the least invasive thing, the least invasive thing for obvious reasons that if it's very simple, I can run to the first tee, I can inject it into my game 
and play great golf starting today, that's an awesome solution, right? So what I talk to my students a lot uh, on the lesson T or during golf schools, when we start talking about making this centered pivot, is I have them start understanding what their head is doing during the golf swing. And a lot of times when I see that head moving, I see them shifting off the golf ball. So I'll talk about a feeling, more of a feeling. It's not really a drill we're going to do, but it's much more of a feeling. If they can keep their head between their feet while they're swinging the golf club, so my head isn't getting any closer to my left foot, it's not getting any closer to my right foot, but it's staying right between my feet as I'm staying, or excuse me, as I'm swinging, you can see that I stay very centered when I do that. So the first thing I would have you do is just get on the range, really kind of hyper focus on your head and making sure your head stays right between your feet as you're swinging the golf club and that's going to keep me very centered. So from down the line, again I'm not letting my head get closer to my left foot or my right foot, I'm keeping my head right between my feet, right over the golf ball and that makes it much easier for me to hit the ground where I'm supposed to, to hit the golf ball first of all, hit the ground where I'm supposed to, get the divot in front of the golf ball. So let's do this. I'm going to get a ball ready for us to hit here. And when I make this swing, I'm just going to really hyper focus on not letting my head move around as I do it. I'm going to keep my head right between my feet, not getting closer to either foot. And as a result, you can see my, my lower body is doing some really, really good things, which we'll talk about when we get into the next drill. So again, from down the line, head is staying between my feet, and it just allows me to deliver the club the way that I want to. So here we go. We're going to give this a try. Get a good setup here. I'm just really hypered on my head, staying between my feet, not getting closer to one or the other. And that was really good and I stayed very centered, felt like I stayed very centered over that golf ball. So the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about using the lower body a little bit better to help me stay centered and stay over the golf ball. And I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a little power boost uh, if you can do this. So on my lesson tee with the people I teach. Uh, in Naples, Florida, which is more of a retired demographic. I see a lot of swaying off the golf ball. I see the, the um, back kind of tilted away from the target. And I want to get away from that. And a good way to get away from that, I'll, I'll give you one thought and then I'll give you a great drill. So one thought would be is if I had a sponge full of water under my right foot, which is my lead foot. If you're a right-handed player, it's going to be your left foot. But as I'm taking the club to the top of the backswing, I am squishing all that water out of the sponge. And you can see as I make that move, my head is staying right over the golf ball. I'm not moving into my left side. I'm not falling back to the right. I'm just pushing and squeezing that water out of the sponge. Keeps me very centered. Now a good drill, and I've shared this in uh, other videos, is I can just throw a tee on the ground and I can step on that tee. And as I'm swinging back, same thing, I just want to feel like I keep pressure on that tee. And that's going to help with a lot of other things like weight shift. But notice as I do that, look at what my lower body is doing. Notice that my left leg, which is my trail leg, is straightening. And as a result, it's releasing that trail hip. And that's why I said, if you do this properly, you're going to see a gain in distance really for a couple reasons. One, you're going to hit it more solid. But two, you're going to create a better turn because we're releasing that hip back behind us better. So from down the line, just going to put this T under my lead foot, my right foot for a lefty golfer. I'm just going to keep some pressure on that and you can see how my trail leg, my left leg is straightening. My left hip is going behind me more and so I'm more turned and I'm, I'm in a good position that I can hit down on this golf ball and get the divot in front of the golf ball. 
So this would be a great way to do it. When you're out on the golf course, the sponge under your foot with the water in it, you're just squishing it all out. When you're on the range, throw a tee under there. Another thought that I've heard that I like a lot is if I took an empty Coke can or Pepsi can, any sort of can, I'm not getting endorsed by anybody here. Um, but if you just take a can and I had it on the ground and I was stepping on it, I want to feel like I crushed that can in the backswing. So all those ideas, the T under as a drill, will help you to create more of a centered pivot, control the bottom of your golf swing, get the divot in front. So let's give this one a try. Get my T in place. Get my stance. It's not as easy as it looks. All right, so I got my T under. I'm just gonna give a rehearsal swing where I kind of feel myself pushing into that T. And I'm gonna give myself, or I'm gonna hit a golf ball here. Yeah, and that felt really good too. I stayed very centered. Divot was in front of the golf ball. Good contact. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is a power move because you're going to look at old videos, say, of Jack Nicklaus or Johnny Miller, and you're going to see they lifted that lead foot. And you're going to say, Mark, when they lift that lead foot, they're getting behind the golf ball. But I want you, even Bubba Watson now, and I'm sure we could find some other players. I think Matt Wolf gets that foot up into, into the air as well. So we could find players that do that, but are they staying centered? Are they shifting behind it? What's happening when they do that? I want you to pay attention to something is you'll notice as they lift that foot in the air, they're staying very centered. We're not seeing them create this tremendous shift off the golf ball and shift back. So they're creating a centered pivot even though they're lifting that foot into the air. And I did a video not too long ago about the most efficient swing for a senior and I left this out, but I want to talk about it right now. And it's a great power move for those of you who struggle with range of motion. Like I don't create enough turn. I don't create enough coil. Go ahead and lift that front foot up. That's going to allow me to go further. If my foot is flat on the ground, I've only got so much range of motion. As soon as I lift that foot, notice my hand path in the club gets going back further. Well, guess what? The further that club head travels, the more time it has to gain speed. I increase the length of the arc and I can create some more power. But we need to be very certain or very careful that as I lift that foot, I am staying over the golf ball. I'm, I'm not swaying off it. And, and that's what I see with people who lift that lead foot. You know, they, they watch, uh, they see a tip on the Golf Channel or in Golf Magazine and they say, hey, if you want to hit it further, lift that front foot, give you a little more range of motion. As soon as they lift that front foot, they're moving away from the target. We can lift that front foot, but I want you to stay with your center, your nose, your head, your sternum more over the golf ball. That'll help us to control the bottom of our golf swing. Like I said, off a tee with a driver, we've got a little bit more leniency there that we can move around a little bit and still create a, a good strike. But definitely off the ground, we want to create more of this centered pivot. So from down the line real quick, I'm just lifting that right foot, my right foot, which is my lead foot, but I'm staying over the golf ball as I do it. And it's just releasing me. I can create more range of motion. You can see my hips open a little bit more. So a lot of good things happen from a distance perspective. When I do that, I just got to make sure that I do it the right way. All right, so let's give this one a try. I'm just going to rehearse it. I'm letting that right foot come up, but as I'm doing it, I'm staying very centered over the golf ball and we'll give it a hit here. A little off balance for me at the finish there. I'm not used to doing that, but definitely went further and it was a very, very good strike. So now you understand how to create a centered pivot in golf. I gave you a couple feels as well as a couple drills that will help you stay centered when you're swinging the golf club and give you better contact, divot in front, better distance. 
And then we also talked about that power move and the proper way to do it to see all the power that we want. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have two more here right now that I promise will continue to help you improve your game. And remember, please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and comment.